This is going to surprise you, I promise. Greater Toronto area real estate prices are up 14.1% since January. In other words, the average sale price has increased from 1.038 million to 1.196 million. In this video, we are going to take a deep dive into the Toronto real estate market data, including, of course, the average price, number of sales, new listings, list to sale price ratio, days on market, and months of inventory. My name is McCallum and I run a real estate team here in the city of Toronto. And I'm also a practicing real estate agent. So I'm on the ground every single day out there with my clients. If you're new to the channel or you're a returning viewer, thank you for being here. Please consider hitting that subscribe and like button. These actions really help push this type of content to other people like yourself looking to learn more about the Canadian and Toronto real estate markets. And if you'd like to chat with me individually, you can go to the first link in the description of this video and book a meeting directly into my calendar at a time that works best for you. So let's get into the data, shall we? Now, the data we're going to be referring to right now is for all of the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. So this data encompasses all properties listed on TREB, not just the city of Toronto. The year-over-year -year data is actually going to look pretty darn good because we have had such an uptick in market activity and pricing from January until today. So in May of 2022, we had an average sale price of 1.2 million. And in May of 2023, we have an average sale price of 1.196 million. So just under 1.2 million. And interestingly, May 2022 was only two months after the first rate hike. As you can see, the number of sales increased dramatically from 7,226 to 9,012, which represents a 24.7% increase year over year. However, new listings were down 18.7% year over year, and active listings were down 23.1% year over year. As you'll see later in this video, active listings are still up month over month, but being down 18.7% since last year is quite alarming. Like we already went over, the average sale price dropped only 1.2% year over year. And days on market from both a listing and property standpoint have increased 16% and 11% respectively year over year. However, are down significantly since the beginning of 2023. Okay, so from here on out in this video, the data that we're going to be using will only be for the city of Toronto. So the 416 area code. It will not include data from areas such as Mississauga, Durham, or York Region. The average sale price of a detached home in the city of Toronto was up in May around 1.9 million. Semis were around 1.4 million. Townhouses dropped from April to May to around 1.3, and condos increased to just under 800,000. And if we look at this on a year over year basis, we are almost in line with where we were in May of 2022. The number of sales has consistently increased from January to May of this year across all major home types. And this is typically what we see at the beginning of each calendar year as we head into the spring market. I think as we head into the summer months, we will start to see the number of sales cool. And this is typically what happens in the yearly real estate cycle. But everything really does depend on what the Bank of Canada is going to do on June 7th and moving forward. The number of new listings is up across the board for all major home types, but the fact is we still need more new listings hitting the market each and every month in most areas of the city. And if we take a look at the number of sales to the number of new listings ratio, we can see that three of the four major home types were experiencing negative home sales to new listings ratios. 
and the outlier being townhouses, which increased in terms of sales to new listings. When the sales to new listings ratio lowers, it means we are entering closer towards a balanced or a buyer's market instead of a seller's market. Interestingly, we continue to see an uptick in the list to sale price ratio across three of the four major home types, with condos being the exception, which didn't decrease, but it plateaued from April to May. So properties continue to sell for over their asking price on average in the city of Toronto. And days on market continues to drop like a ton of bricks. We'll take a look here quickly at condo apartments because it's the easiest and cleanest to read. Condo started the year in January with 33 days on market on average in Toronto and consistently dropped throughout Q1 into Q2. And now we see the days on market for condo apartments at 18 days. All property types in the city of Toronto continue to get scooped up very quickly, leaving buyers needing to act fast in order to secure a home. Months of inventory has continued to trend downwards quite significantly from January to March across all major home types. And then in March, we started to see somewhat of a plateau, but still trending downwards to May. And then across all major home types, we are sitting below two months of inventory, which statistically speaking means we are well within a seller's market. And a seller's market is typically anything below three months of inventory. It would take under two months for all available inventory in each home type to sell if no new listings were brought to the market. And months of inventory is pretty much double across the board when looking between April of 2022 and January of 2023. For semis and townhouses in particular, it would take less than one month for all available inventory to sell if no new listings were brought to the market, which is a clear sign that the homes available for sale are being absorbed fast and not enough listings are hitting the MLS. And I'm finding that on the ground level as well. Townhouses and semis in the city of Toronto are moving very quickly, selling for over asking, and are having multiple buyers competing for each individual home. The market is appreciating each and every month. And there are many news sources claiming that the market is back and the correction is over, but I'm not ready to make such a bold claim. We're five months into 2023 at this point, which should be enough time to make a claim. However, there are so many other factors not related to time, specifically interest rates. And seeing the Bank of Canada has a rate announcement coming up on June 7th, we could find ourselves in a very different position next month. But anecdotally, I've been speaking with homeowners since the rates paused, and the common thought process around rates impacting them is if rates jump 25 bips in June, it won't be the end of the world, even if they jump 50 bips between now and the end of the summer. I do, however, expect to see a slowdown in activity over the summer, and it's going to feel quite drastic, especially for those who have been searching for a home over the past two months. I'm going to leave you with one final note here. Prices can go up, prices can go down, and prices can hover 